Three. So, I'm still in the minor three. So they know. It's no trick. So the next but... one, it's F. Right? So I'm gonna go into the F. And then, can you give me the next already? You're going to do four. Four is G minor. Hello, Internet! Nice to see you! When you are learning your instrument, people tell you that you have to play everything in different keys, and they tell you to take it around the fretboard and play it in different keys, and, but they never explain to you how exactly to do it, what to do it, and when they explain it to you, they typically tell you, well, move it through the circle of fifths. Now, personally, as much as the circle of fifths is fundamental, I find it incredibly boring, because you take something uh, and then you move it to the circle of fifths and it's predictable. And then also you tend to, it, it, it tends to sound very jazzy the more you go on. And, uh, and if you want to sound jazzy, no problem. But I think that the circle of fifth is just one of the many possible exercises, okay? So it's more interesting if you do something different and I'm gonna show you a way to take something through different keys and make it sound musical, okay? So for the sake of argument, I'm gonna take a very, very simple chord progression. I'm gonna play something like that, I mean D minor, I'm gonna play a D minor, and I'm gonna play the same D minor but in first inversion, so with a bass of F, and I'm gonna play a G, I'm playing a G6-5, so the notes are G, D and E, because I like the sound of the 6-5 chord in fourth position in the key, and then I'm gonna play an A major. Now this is, it's a 1-4-5 essentially guys, okay, so it's 1, one in first inversion, four, five, and back. Simple thing, okay? Simple thing. And I can arrange these in several different ways. So, if you want to follow me along, I'm gonna put this on a tablature, and so you can see what I'm playing. Okay, six lines. Okay. What I'm playing right now is these. Uh, five, seven, six. Then, Eight, seven, six, then five, uh, seven, five, and then seven, six, five. Simple as that. Okay. I can turn this around, keep the same bass, but invert the top two voices. I can play these. That's the same chord progression in which I invert the top two voices. Again, follow me and it's gonna be easy. So, and in this one I'm playing 10, 10, 10, then I'm gonna play, yep, 8, 10, 10, then I'm gonna play 10, 9, 10, and finally 12, 9. Okay, so I'm playing essentially a uh, one for five in D minor. So simple. If I had to move this to the circle of fifth, I will have I will do play these in D minor, then play these the next uh, fifth um, down or up, depending what, what circle you find. But let's go down and so play it in G minor. Play it in C minor, then play it in F minor, okay, and so on and so forth. Okay, I have to move it around, but it's predictable, it's boring, and honestly, it's not really that musical. So here's what we're gonna do instead. I'm gonna have my assistant Matt. Can I have the um, deck? First, let me show you the deck. Then I'm gonna well, Matt, come in. My assistant Matt here is gonna help us today. So you see that this stuff is done in real time. Come in, come in, Matt. Come oh. in. Don't, 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 be, don't be camera shy, okay? I'm not gonna kick you out <laughs> of the yeah. camera. Oh, yet. <laughs> Knowing you, I will. But, <laughs> okay. I have this deck of flashcards, and every deck contains a Roman numeral. Every, every card contains a Roman numeral. So I have a, a three. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's written a three here, it's written a one here. You confirm, right? It's I written can a four. Yes. It can confirm. On some cards, I have two numbers. So for example, in this card, I have a big M for major with a six and a little M for minor that indicates a three. It means if my first original key was a major key, we're gonna 
uh, uh, this is gonna mean sixth. And if the um, original key was a minor key, it's gonna mean a third, okay? So, and here's how we proceed. I am in D minor. In D minor, my chords are D minor, E diminish, I'm never gonna use this, F major, G minor, A minor, uh, B flat major, and C major. D minor, of course, is the first. F major is the third. G minor is the fourth. And so on and so forth. You guys know your Roman numerals. Now, and I'm using the, I'm not going with all nonsense of this being the flat sixth. It's the sixth, okay? It's just to know where we are. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna play my little chord progression in D minor. So the first chord of the game. Now, Matt is gonna shuffle the deck of cards. Okay, and turn it around so you don't, you don't cool. even see what happens. Okay. Good call. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't have thought of that. Fantastic. And then he's going, and, and then while I play the D minor thing, he's going to tell me the next number. Three. So, I'm still in D minor. Three. So they know. There's no trick. So the next but... one, it's F. Right? So I'm going to go into the F. And then, can you give me the next already? Four is G minor, okay, and then I'm going to go into the G minor. Expertly done. What about six? Six, which is B flat, and so I'll have to go uh, this way. Next is a five. Five? Yeah, we go this way. And a two. A two to in major, maybe, but it might be seven. Would be a seven. Exactly, because seven. otherwise I'd let to go into the other diminish, okay? So, before we continue, right. what exactly am I doing? I'm taking my little chord progression. Again, one, uh, D minor, D minor in first inversion, G minor. G, G, 6, 5, sorry, and A. So the first chord, the first in first inversion, the fourth and the fifth, okay? And I'm playing this thing and landing on a D minor at the beginning of the bar. Then I'm seeing what keys is the next, and the next was again seven. Seven. Good, and I'm thinking, so I'm gonna play the same thing now in C major, but I cannot start from C major in root position because I'm already at the beginning of the bar with my D minor. So I'm gonna start with the with the C, but in first inversion. So I'm on D minor and I play a C major chord in first inversion, and I'm playing the fourth chord in C major, which is F, with a five six, and then I'm gonna play the fifth chord in C major, which is a G, and then I'm gonna end at the beginning of the bar again with C. Next, next we have a four. Four. So I'm thinking, what is the four? in the original key of D minor. The fourth original key of D minor is G minor. But I cannot play a G minor in, in, in root position because I'm already at the beginning of the bar and that space in time is occupied. So I'm gonna play the G minor in first inversion. Okay, it's gonna be this. So I, I, I was here and I go here. I could have gone uh, in, 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 I could have done this in many different ways. I could have played this, this way, sorry. This way. Okay, but I like it here. So that's the G minor in first inversion. Then I'm gonna play the fourth chord in G minor, which is C, 6 5. And I'm gonna play the fifth chord in G minor, which is D major. And I'm gonna land on a G minor. No, minor. Then you're gonna give me the next chord. 5. 5, which is A minor, again, the original key of D minor. And so I'm gonna think, I'm not gonna play the root position because I don't take the space that I occupy. I'm gonna play the A minor in first inversion, okay? Which is this. And you see, it, it connects, it always connects, okay? And then I'm gonna keep going the same way, okay? Now, when you're gonna do this, or if you are very familiar with your keys, etc., you're gonna notice that every time there is either a note in common or some notes close by, or there's a pretty obvious connection between the previous chord and the next one in first inversion, okay? But whatever your chord progression is gonna happen anyway because all those keys are related, okay? D minor has one flat. 
just like F. G minor and B flat have two flats. A minor and C have no flats or sharps. So you see, we are always either one sharp or one flat away from the main key. All those chords are related, all those keys are related. It doesn't matter in what order we pick them up, there's always gonna, gonna be a connection. Your job is to find that connection in real time and exploit it, <laughs> okay? That's your job, your job. I'm doing this with a chord progression. Why? Because it's fun and I love chord progression and honestly, I love the sound of this thing going through all those different keys, okay? And it, 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 just, it just flows really well. And there's something that uh, Baroque musicians were doing all the time, getting this semi-random um, sequence of keys and then try to, to, to go through them in the most fluid possible way. But you can do this with anything. You can take a little melody, okay? You can take your little melody in D minor, okay? Or you can take the pentatonic one. And then get an another one following this idea and, on, and, and play the same melody but in a different uh, pentatonic, possibly in the same position. Or you can do this with anything in music. This is a musical way to move and study things through different keys. And it's musical because since all those, all those uh, keys are connected, you are doing something that actually happens in real music, not something abstract like uh, go through the whole circle of fifth throughout all the 12 keys, which practically never happens in any song unless you write a specific song for that specific effect, which generally sucks. <laughs> okay. It's not good. It's not good. It's not, not good. good. Matt confirms. Okay. So that's the idea. See, and, and again, you just need to get some flashcards, decide on a little chord progression and you can totally get this chord progression. I'm going to move around so you guys can see it and copy it. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. And just start having fun with your guitar. I'm sure you guys are going to have some questions about this, so write it, them in the comment. I'm going to be around here for the next hour or so after I publish this video to answer your questions. Now, if you want to do this in real time, an absolute thing you need to do is to know all the notes on your guitar fretboard. It looks impossible at first, it looks like a lot of memorization, it looks like a lot of legwork, but in reality it is quite easy. There is a way to learn all the notes on your fretboard in five minutes a day, not in five minutes total, in five minutes a day, but in a quite a short amount of time, and it becomes permanent and super fast. I wrote an ebook and made videos about all that. You can have all the package for free if you get it on the link on the top right, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Just go there, and I'm gonna send this to you for free, completely free, the whole method, the whole system, definitive way of learning the notes on the guitar. It works, and honestly, it's free. What are you risking? Just go and get it. This is Tommaso Zilio and Matt of musicdiryforguitar.com, and until next time, enjoy.